from MSNBC, U.S. needs to get involved in a leadership role in Haiti, retired Admiral James Stavridis. And I want to take a look at Matt Gates talking to some Biden officials about the crisis in Haiti on the other side of this one. 22 past the hour, the situation in Haiti continues to deteriorate amid escalating gang violence. The U.N. says more than 362,000 Haitians have... The U.N., who cares what the U.N. says? The, I mean, can they be trusted as far as they can be thrown? Doubt it. ...been displaced and warns the country is on the brink of a hunger crisis as humanitarian aid runs out. The country's political future remains uncertain after the prime minister and now... Yikes, what in the world is going on? Looks like this summer of love in lower Manhattan. He would resign. Now, yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told my colleague Andrea Mitchell he spoke with Kenya's president about Kenya's U.N. security mission for Haiti, saying it will... Whoa, look at these. It got a bunch of uh, two-way enthusiasts there in Haiti, I suppose. ...move forward once an interim prime minister and transitional council is established. Joining us now, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez from the Dominican Republic. Oh, Gabe Gutierrez. This is MSNBC is ridiculous. They're the type of people to say Latinx. I never knew if it was Latinx or Latinx. Well, it's completely made. I guess all words technically are made up, but they made it up in the past five or six years and then came out and said that you shouldn't even say the word Latinx or Latinx, you should say Latin A. I mean, it was a complete mess, but that's what happens. The goalposts constantly move. It is really whack-a-mole out there. On the border with Haiti and retired Admiral James Stavridis, NBC News Chief International Analyst, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, also former commander of the U.S. Southern Command. His new book, 2054, is out. Okay, so... Now, what was a story, a report about the crisis in Haiti has turned into a book pitch from this guy. What, I, what else did I expect? Last time I watched an MSNBC video, and there'll be plenty more, but it was those two gentlemen telling us about white rural rage. So they went on there to hawk their book and tell uh, Mika Brzezinski that basically you know, the great majority of the country, the country is in fact racist, right? So these people, they have these huge, terrible stories to tell, but before they get there, they're going to sell you a book. Now, so Gabe, the situation in Haiti continues to deteriorate by the second. What's the latest? And I I'm sorry, okay. Obviously MSNBC has, you know, joyless Orwell Reed with her blonde Trump wig, and that's totally cult cultural appropriation. But just, you know, completely on a completely shallow, maybe leftist narrative take here. Are we supposed to look at any of these guys and think they're going to shoot it straight? Look at these people. They, I, I wish I could see it through a different lens, but the guy in the middle of the MSNBC guy, like fat head, and then this weirdo fake news reporter and the former admiral who's pitching you a book. Do they do any of these people? even look remotely truthful why can't we just be a little bit more authentic yes now and sorry and the the authentic thing comes to my mind because that republican rebuttal to the state of the union was totally well obviously it's rehearsed and then i'm sure they you know they tweak it a little bit depending on what the president actually says but it was like a disney princess out there reading the rebuttal from her kitchen and it was totally forced so that that is where the lack of authenticity comes to mind and i haven't really heard these guys speak yet but it rings i mean they're in the mainstream media so of course they're completely inauthentic jose i want to show you something really quickly walk over here with me this is uh, humanitarian aid actually that is going into haiti right now the reason i'm showing with you showing you this a big bag of humanitarian aid. Good job. These are actually Haitians that are bringing it in. The reason is, is that Haiti's border is right over there. You see that mass of people going back there? That's because this border has been closed, but today, and only today, it's temporarily open for this open air market in no man's land in between the two countries. Again, Haiti over there. I wonder if they're going to spot any of those amazing Haiti is great already hats or shirts that Conan O'Brien made a couple years back. The Dominican Republic over here. And 
Oh, this is what we've been seeing all morning, Jose. Just look at this line. The market goes all the way over there. Jose, the UN is trying to get more humanitarian aid into Haiti. They're opening up a humanitarian. And you can tell this guy, look, I get it, whatever. He's, he's a reporter. But you can tell he's just loving it. He's like, yeah, look at me. I'm the white savior here. I'm going to save these people with this amazing news report. People are going to love it. Corridor in the sky. And there is just, frankly, some chaos here this morning as people have been telling us that they're so hungry over the border. Now, Jose, as you know, about 80 percent. Wait, they're hungry? Huh. Well, I guess they could probably. Of the capital, Port-au-Prince is under the control of gangs. Not as much violence in the rural areas of Haiti. That's kind of where we are. We're uh, in the northwest part of the Dominican Republic, the northeast part of Haiti. Not as much violence here, but there is extreme poverty, and the humanitarian need is overwhelming because there is a lot of hunger here. So you see all these Haitians now waiting in line to get back across the border, um, and there's that open-air market right over there. But Jose, so as you yeah, bro. I mean, they sh they sh definitely should not have to go back across the border to Haiti. They should just go to Florida and join us here. We'll get, set them up with a free hotel room and a hot plate and a debit card. They say the deterioration in Haiti is deteriorating even more. And they just keep saying they want the world to pay attention and know just how much uh, need there is here, Jose. And so, Gabe, thank you for being there. Thank you for bringing us in. And I want to talk about the Dahabon area. And also, so this is just a temporarily one day pause in what has been a shut border for for the longest period of time. And so the people that are coming from Haiti are allowed to go into that area, but not into the Dominican Republic, essentially. And then yeah. they're so, forced to go back. Yeah, that, that's right. That's right. So let me. Oh, well, it sounds like they are in the Dominican Republic technically, but not in the actual, you know, livable, livable part, I suppose. So they come over the border to get food and bring it back, but they can't go deep into the Dominican Republic. So is that to say that they need some sort of identification and some sort of vetting process before they can just be released into the middle of DR? Yes, exactly right. So the ones that are allowed to come here, we're told, they do have to pay a fee, what little they have in order to get- Oh, oh, they have to pay a fee, okay. The permit to come here. And uh, my photo, my uh, colleague, photojournalist David Nekocheyev, he can pan around here. You see where those, that gate is right over there. There are security officers right there kind of blocking the path. They can go no further. So we're essentially in a sort of no man's land. Look at that. Looks like um, some border security. How about that? Looks like uh, other countries are doing it. And here between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. That is why the Haitians are allowed to be here. They cannot go any further. But they come here, we're told now, they have this open air market about once a week. But by and large, the, um, the border here is shut down. And just a few minutes ago, we actually saw an immigration bus bringing uh, Haitians that had gotten into the Dominican Republic. Authorities say they got there illegally and they were the unlucky ones that were being deported. Oh, so Haitians are crossing the border illegally into the Dominican Republic and they are being deported. That that's crazy. That sounds sounds a little racist. Right back to Haiti, right back to a desperate situation, comes out. Gabe Gutierrez, thank you so very much for that reporting. Really appreciate it. So, Admiral, uh, so much to talk uh, with you about. Uh, last year, this is not now, this is last year, you wrote a piece saying Haiti needs a new U.N. mission, this time led by the U.S. Uh, so this formal, former admiral or whatever was writing for the Washington Compost. And look at this picture. This is crazy. Hold on. Let me look at this. Like, I guess... I guess that's kind of what Oakland looks like at this point in time. Admiral, you know this better than anybody else. I mean, the history of American intervention in the Americas has not always been that great. And in Haiti in particular, many would think it has been disastrous many times. What? Yeah, was there, I think there was somebody who completely took advantage of Haiti. There was Wyclef the rapper, and then there was another family, I think. I'm 
perhaps forgetting the details of the situation, but there was an American political family who took huge advantage of Haiti back when they had a huge earthquake, I believe. What do you think needs to happen now? And why did you write that piece last year? Uh, because I saw these trend lines moving in all of the wrong direction. Haiti has uh, the poorest population in all of the Americas. Well over half live on less than $2 a day. And in the 90s, Americans tend to forget we had waves of migration, refugee driven from Haiti. All of that. Wait, wait. Refugees from Haiti back in the 90s. Now, were they hopping the fence and swimming through the river? Were they showing up in Florida on doors? Were they doing paperwork? Were they paying money and, and, and taking tests? They constantly, every single time, will conflate the idea of illegal immigration and legal immigration. Like, that's their, that's kind of been the goal, especially recently. That could happen again if we don't get a peacekeeping mission in place. Needs to be United Nations commanded. There was such a mission, as you'll recall, Jose, from 07 to 17, about 10,000 troops, mostly from the Americas, Brazil, Chile, no Americans in that mission at that time. We were engaged in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now we have this crisis within our shared neighborhood in the Americas, and so far, the only nation to stand up and say they'll send a thousand troops, which is not enough, is Kenya. The U.S. OK, so Kenya says they're going to send a thousand troops, which is not enough. And I guess I don't know. I'm no I'm no expert on geopolitics, as one bartender famously said. But how they're, they're going to go there and and go to go to war with barbecue I mean, what are they supposed to do? The U.S. needs to get involved in a leadership role here and very quickly. In a leadership role. They need to get involved in a leadership role very quick, quickly. But what does that actually mean? You're going to take out barbecue by force and install a similar corrupt government there? I mean, obviously, this is the picture. Of, <laughs> quite literally, this guy is riding a motorcycle out of a flaming flaming garbage so that's the peak of corruption then we have the empty suit white collar corruption in washington dc and they are supposed to go to haiti and take on a leadership role along with kenya who is sending a thousand troops to take down barbecue Admiral, you know, Haiti, and, and again, you know this better than, than anybody else. Haiti has such a rich, extraordinary history. I mean, it's the first. Oh. <laughs> free black republic in the new world. The first independent state in the Caribbean. And yet. All right. Perfect. So even as they are literally showing us footage of people fleeing, hopping back and forth the border, carrying big bags of humanitarian aid. Tires on fire, motorcycles, cannibal warlords. Oh, it's such a rich history. The first black republic. I, I get what else what else could you expect them to do? Right? I mean, you you could not expect it would be more surprising if they didn't mention race in this this MSNBC, MSDNC, MS thirteen DNC piece. It, nothing less would be suitable. Haiti has been plagued by by political mismanagement, violence. The hate Oh, so so I guess we're we're in agreement that it doesn't really matter what co color these people are because they have a certain level of corruption along with the white Americans who have a certain level of corruption. But of course, MS they have to play they have to play the race card. It's like written in the contract by the owner of the company or something. Like no matter what happens, even when an illegal kills an American, make sure that the word illegal is scrutinized. Make sure that the phrase say her name is scrutinized because that belongs to black people. Asian people have suffered so much. And I'm thinking of how the, the, the different governments and regimes in, in the history of Haiti have have abused their people from. Yeah, the first black republic, he says, and they have been just, you know, overrun with corruption. And were, were any of those people white or, or is that the, the white devil that we're always talking about any of those people or were they all and, and for the record too 
Do you think Haiti is on record talking about we need more diversity? We need more white people in government? What is happening here? Papa Doc, the Baby Doc, the the Tom Tom Macoots, and and uh, I mean, you know, even Aristides, Ximenez. I mean, why is Haiti so um, hurt? Oh, he says hurt. And there was another guy who used a certain term to refer to Haiti, and they're obviously tiptoeing around that. And I'm not going to say it here because this is a family friendly show, but he's basically admitting. The same exact thing that Donald Trump admitted a handful of years ago, that this um, wasn't a really nice place. Not not on your bucket list, not a real tourist destination. Uh, first and foremost, they have no natural resources whatsoever. Uh, secondly, you put your finger on it already, a series of bad leaders have taken over and abused the country. And, and that's exactly what's going to happen in America if they keep if these weirdo Democrats keep, you know, winning elections all over the place, winning fair and square, like Tiffany Hinyard, she's the mayor of Dalton and the leader of the township or whatever, <laughs> quite literally spending the taxpayer dollars on blacked out Chevy trucks and turning the police force into our own private security. If people like that continue to, to run completely, completely unchecked we're we're really not that far off and hopefully we don't get to the point of cannibal gangs but I, i'd say we might be on the road and uh, it's a good example of how political leadership done well can save a country even if it has no resources <laughs> but a country like haiti that has very little in the way of uh food uh oil none of it um what what happened? Why is every? I guess that's why they call the guy barbecue. Everything's on fire. Why did you guys set everything on fire? That's what you were doing to smoke out the corrupt politicians to replace them with corrupt gang leaders. Even the wood has been burned for fires, as you're showing there. The forests are essential. Even the wood has been burned for fires, and then they clip to a burned out truck. Definitely looks like Oakland. Actually, non-existent. It's a nation that has also been struck again and again and again by natural disasters, earthquakes, mm -hmm. massive hurricane storms. Um, Don't say it. He better not say it. It's a nation that has never gotten its footing in the 20th century. And so, uh, again, we as an international community, I think, have a humanitarian crisis. And in the United States, ultimately, a wave of migration could be headed at us if we can't help head this off. The U.N. is a good pathway for this. Yeah, this guy goes to bat for the, oh, the U.N. needs to step in and we got to take a leadership role. All right, bro. Let's take a look at what Matt Gates has to say about the uh, impending migration fiasco on top of the crisis that we already have. From Forbes Breaking News, Matt Gates grills top Biden officials about efforts to prevent mass migration from Haiti into the U.S. The ambassadors in the region and then the work that uh, that we've done to work with our partners. Gentlemen's our time. I just, I can't, look, this is probably a woman, but I can't, with that Space Force young lady and, of course, Admiral Dr. Lawyer Rachel Levine in these suits, like, I, I, it's now, in a weird way, has like trained me to believe anybody wearing these suits is is likely a transformer. Uh, I think somebody once said that eighty five percent of the military is is trans. Time's expired, Chair, and I recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates. So, what's the difference between Haiti and a failed state? What's the difference between New York City and a failed state? What's the difference between San Francisco and a failed state? It's telling, right? We can't really identify them because the gangs are in charge, the government has been thrown out, and as a Florida man, I'm deeply concerned about this wave of people that we're about to have, that we are having, coming from Haiti, and it will accelerate because I've gone to Opelaka and I've spent time with the folks that are engaged in Operation Vigilant Century, and they say the number one push factor that drives these Haitians into Broward County, Palm Beach County, where they don't disperse throughout the country, they stay in Southeast Florida, that that, that because Southeast Florida is beautiful. Driving factor is the deterioration of conditions in Haiti. So what are... 
this guy does look weird though. Matt Gates, right? He seems like a pretty sharp dude, but he is kind of like right wing Gavin Newsom. He's got the hair and the, you know, pointy nose. He looks a little reptilian, but I don't know. I, I guess he's a good enough guy. What are we doing to prepare for that wave and to ensure that these people are not paroled into the United States as the administration has done with people on the southern border, but instead are repatriated back at the dock at Port-au-Prince? Oh, 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 yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I can assume they don't have a good answer. Uh, Congressman, we're doing a number of things to ensure that we're keeping track of the situation and we're prepared. At the moment, we have not yet seen... And, and again, let, let's go back just a couple of seconds. Uh, again, without being totally superficial about it, I mean, these two ladies, I, I mean, are they really the ones that are going to take charge of the situation and make sure that bad guys from Haiti who eat people don't get into Florida. We're keeping track of the situation and we're prepared. At the moment, we have not yet seen large numbers, what we would characterize as a, as a maritime mass migration, um, but we are alert to that. mass migration? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> and that's another thing. Oh, well, we don't anticipate, like uh, Janet Yellen said, well, we don't anticipate or inflation is going to be uh, transitional or whatever it was. They said it's all completely fake. But she also says, Matt, oh, it's not mass migration yet. So it's just a little bit. Right. And then they're going to use some astronomical number, uh, some astronomical number to constitute mass. It, it's all completely fake. Nothing but political theater. We are we are alert to that possibility. Um, I think you're right uh, that the the driving conditions in Haiti could very well press more people. So uh, we've recently approved some uh, additional assistance that we can provide to uh, the Coast Guard. I, I I think that that has now fully been approved. Uh, we'll be providing notifications if we haven't. Already. Okay, so she doesn't know. She kind of rambles on about how there might be some more aid, but then doesn't know. She's not really sure at the end. Already, uh, uh, to okay, provide well, additional shipboard there. assistance. Because I've talked to the Coast Guard, and what they say would really support them would be more naval vessels, would be DOD support. And because I think you correctly said that there is an anticipated mass migration here, there are specific legal authorities that we can access, that I would implore you to access. Specifically, George W. Bush signed Executive Order uh, 13276. And in that executive order, there is the ability for any president to designate an anticipated mass migration and then get gray hull naval vessels into the Straits of Florida to deter that migration and then to repatriate those people before they get to Florida. So General Richardson, is it your best military advice based on what we just heard from Ms. Zimmerman that we activate the authorities anticipating a mass migration? So I think that we need to be postured appropriately uh, for that, uh, exactly what you're talking about. And I have put in a request for- Oh, so we need to be, we need to be ready. Okay, groundbreaking. Increased capability to do exactly that. And, uh, and we are ready if a mass migration, if we need to deal with a mass migration, we did a full walkthrough of our contingency plan on Gitmo last summer with all of the interagency and all of my components. When I talk to the Coast Guard folks, they seem to say that we don't have to go drop these folks off at Gitmo, where they, they become a burden on the U.S. taxpayer. We can interdict at sea and then repatriate directly at Port-au-Prince. When you say you're preparing for that, does that specifically mean DOD assets? So for what happens on a daily basis that the Coast Guard is doing and the repatriation under Homeland Security authorities back to Cap Haitian happens on a daily basis. Yeah, so no, I, I got that. But what the co when I go down to Opelika and, and get eyeball to eyeball with these folks, they say, Congressman, we really could use the DOD assistance, not more money for the Coast Guard, not more meetings, conference calls, and committees, but gray hull vessels in the Straits of Florida doing the interdictions, doing the repatriations. So when you say you're, you're anticipating, I think Ms. Zimmerman laid it out correctly, so given the, the fact that an anticipated maritime mass migration is specifically contemplated pursuant to 46 U.S.C. 70051, can, can I leave this discussion <laughs> believing that it will be your best military advice uh, to the administration to utilize DOD assets for this purpose, General Richards? If I'm requested to do that, I will definitely do that. At no, I, I want you to make the request, not be requested. That's what I'm trying to ascertain. Okay. Yes, Congressman.
Yeah, she doesn't really seem... She's waiting for somebody to tell her what to do, and he's saying, no, you should be proactive in doing it. Yes, you, you will make that request for DOD so assets. So I will talk Florida. with District 7 and our Coast Guard on the, on the Atlantic side, uh, Atlantic area, and uh, see if they need additional uh, gray, DOD gray holes. They have not requested that specifically from Southcom. And so, but if there's a need for that, I would absolutely request it. Thank you for that, because I, I really think getting ahead of this will ensure that the humanitarian conditions um, uh, will, will be far better, that we could perhaps deter some of this, uh, because, I mean, it's tragic conditions. When you talk to these folks and they say that these Haitians are pouring gasoline on little babies and doing... Uh, that's great, and that's... Why are they setting everything on fire? There seems like they're wasting gasoline. It's probably a shortage of that. They're driving, driving around in their motorcycles in and out of, you know, tire fires... Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. Absolute chaos. Doing everything they can to deter interdictions. Um, it, it sharpens the minds of my fellow Floridians to want to make sure you guys are doing everything possible. And I greatly appreciate the exchange today. Yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Sharon, I recognize Jennifer from Connecticut. All right. Well, um, the Haitians are coming. The cannibal gangsters may or may not be on their way. And America doesn't really seem ready or should i say the people of america might not be ready for what the establishment is ready to foist on us this time